So much like intermittent fasting, the ketogenic diet is something that comes and goes in regards to popularity. And at the end of the day, people do get some positive outcomes from the ketogenic diet as well as intermittent fasting, which is why it comes and goes. From a marketing perspective, you know, people get excited about something new, which is actually old, and, uh, you know, they try to like jump onto it, are consistent and do get positive outcomes as a result of that. So with the ketogenic diet, essentially what we're doing here is consuming a, a high fat diet to utilize fat for energy. We're going to have a low carbohydrate diet, diet to force your body to use that fat for energy and not use carbohydrates instead. And we're going to have a more moderate protein intake. Now, the reason why this is important is because our body prefers to use carbohydrates for energy. So if we have a high carb diet, we're not going to use fat for energy. We're going to use carbs for energy, uh, which is totally fine. It makes no difference because our total caloric intake matters the most, right? Uh, but for some people, they feel like a higher fat diet allows them to, uh, you know, I guess perform better on a day-to-day -day basis, not feel as hungry and not rely on carbohydrates. If you have some insulin resistance, then, you know, you maybe you're sensitive to carbohydrates. You might prefer to have a higher fat intake. And in some circumstances, you might prefer to have a ketogenic diet, which means very high fat, very low carbohydrates and moderate protein. The reason why it's important to have moderate protein is because your body can actually break down protein and use that for energy, convert that into carbohydrates and use that for energy instead of using fat. So if you have a high protein diet and a high fat diet, it's possible that they'll be competing. Um, you know, your body will try to use the fat for energy, but it's possible that we'll just use that protein, converts to carbohydrates. Um, you know, it's kind of like, well, you should have just ate carbohydrates anyway. So we do have to keep protein at a lower amount. If you're looking to be in a ketogenic state, meaning you're using ketones for energy, which are fat-based, and you have a carbohydrate uh, food source that will kick you out of ketosis and force your body to use carbs for energy, which is your body's preferred fuel source. So we have to remember that if you are going to choose to be uh, following a ketogenic diet, then we do have to completely limit carbohydrates as much as possible, um, you know, to keep your body in ketosis, keep yourself using fat for energy and, uh, you know, again, getting the outcomes that we're looking for now. On, uh, to keep it simple, as we are looking to do in these videos, um, a ketogenic diet might be good for someone who feels like they are carbohydrate sensitive um, or has a medical condition which, which kind of feeds on carbohydrates, right? So there are some medical conditions that I'm not going to mention them because it's out of my scope of practice, but there are some medical conditions which, uh, you know, your body, it kind of like the disease or whatever it might be, will feed on carbohydrates. So by taking carbs out, increasing your fats for energy instead, it's going to help you to actually, you know, function and not feed, you know, the negative aspect of what you might be going through. That is a very unique scenario. Outside of that, if you're someone who's extremely overweight, obese, you know, you need to have lower calories, obviously, and you need to have enough fruits, vegetables, and protein, which, and fruits and vegetables are carbohydrates, right? But if you are obese, you can probably afford to consume fewer total calories and maybe carbohydrates are the nutrient that you snack on the most, which is keeping you out of shape. So by switching to a ketogenic diet, you will by default maintain a reduction in caloric intake because it just takes out so many foods that you can't eat now that you would typically overfeed on. And as a result, we see the weight loss that we want. In addition to that, if we are consuming fewer carbohydrates, we're holding less fluid in our whole body you know, within the cell, within the muscles, right? Um, carbohydrates will retain fluid. Not a bad thing at all, but, you know, if you do take out carbohydrates, we are going to see a, a drop, a reduction in fluid weight throughout our body, um, you know, potentially a reduction in inflammation, and our muscles are going to be smaller as a result because we're not holding all this glycogen, which is stored carbohydrate in the muscle, right? So we're going to become smaller and probably weigh less as a result of that as well. Um, from a, from a performance perspective, carbohydrates are king. So we definitely want to keep those in if we're looking to build and maintain muscle. Um, we're looking to have really good strength outcomes and we're looking for fat loss in general. Then we want to keep carbs as our primary fuel source, keep the fats on the lower end and just focus on the caloric deficit uh, through playing with you know our total calories overall. So that's pretty much it for the ketogenic diet. It's, uh, it's kind of simple. In most cases, we don't need to do it. Um, in some special populations, it might be something that you would consider doing.